This is going to be part two of the series of tutorials about 3D CSS. In the first one, I demonstrated the XYZ world. And now we are in a website that I really like. I recommend all the things I'm going to show you can be found on our uh, D2L course shell in module five read before class. And the first thing to understand is that 3D in CSS is what we call paper thin, which means when we rotate something on the 3D axis in uh, CSS, it rotates. You see how when it gets to be, when it passes before eyes, it has no depth. So in other words, it's not really like uh, objects that have volume. Think of pieces of paper. It's more like, you know, planes that we can rotate in all kinds of different directions, but we can still uh, create quite interesting, you know, 3D constructions with this. A 2D rotate would be like this. This is a 3D rotate. Um, to illustrate that, we got, of course, the rotate X, rotate Y, rotate Z. So I'm going to use their um, try it yourself just to illustrate. This is a normal div element, and this is an element that was rotated 150 degrees. Of course, each cycle has 360. Half a cycle is 180, so this is 150, which means almost upside down. Let's play around with the numbers. What if it was only 15 degrees? Try it. You can see that it almost looks the same because it's just a little thinner. Think again of a piece of paper that was rotated just, you know, like leaning towards you or something like that. Let's do a rotate Y. Run it. If I did a rotate Y of something pretty big, which would be like, you know, 70, It starts looking like, again, think of a revolving door. A rotate Z, unless we apply some other perspective, looks just like, you know, rotating something um, in 2D. So if this was rotate Z, think of a pencil that's stuck in it that's pointing towards you. Here's rotate Z. It's the same object, only rotated. Think again, as if there was a pencil stuck here, ro rotated towards you. So this is, you know, I use rotate X uh, demonstration, but we really uh, demonstrated uh, rotate X, Y, and Z. The other thing that they demonstrate really well is I'm going back to the reading before class, um, is the 3D perspective, which I tried. Basically, the 3D perspective is the position from the camera. So the perspective property is used to give a 3D positioned element some perspective, or in other words, defines how far the object is from the user. So a lower value will result in a more intense, again, think of yourself putting an object before your eyes really, really close. Every little movement looks really extreme. If the object is really far, let's say even, you know, like a house that's a mile away. If it rotates a little, you won't. You're not going to see too much like of a uh, of an extreme change. So the way they demonstrate it in um, uh, 3D schools is something like this. This is a perspective of 800 pixels. <coughs> Again, think what's 800 pixels? A typical. Uh, desktop screen nowadays is, as far as its width, this one, for instance, about 1600 pixels. So what does that mean? That I'm pretty close to the screen, about half the width of the screen. I'm, you know, my nose is about half uh, of that, let's say like 10 inches from the screen. So let's play around with the numbers for a second. Um, if the perspective was not 800, but 1800, See how it looks less extreme, less 3D, the, the lines look more um, parallel. But if I make it really small, instead of 1800, I make it 18, which is basically my nose is stuck to the screen, it would look like this. The lower the number of the perspective, the more extreme the perspective is. It's like, you know, like I stuck my nose in it. Um, and the other thing that I want you to notice is that those objects are nested inside each other. The perspective is always given to the parent. We're going to see this in the examples that we're going to analyze in class. The perspective is basically like of the whole, I wouldn't say the whole world, but definitely the parent object. And inside of that 
the children are transforming or translating or rotating with um, their parents. Right before we go back and start, you know, our own code, let me change this to 1800. I would say that typical uh, perspectives to make things look, you know, like normal would be somewhere in the hundreds. See, this is 150, a little more extreme. Again, lower means more extreme. And 800 looks more like, you know, square. But notice how we can build a cube because even though uh, CSS uh, 3D is paper thin, we can take six objects that are each paper thin and build a cube out of them. And we will build, you know, hexagons and octagons and all kinds of stuff, you know, like that. Um, I will see you in the next tutorial where we start analyzing our own code, which will also become your next assignment.